Hello, royal ones, royal family. Welcome all to the royal bride godmother. I'm Grace, your spiritual mentor and godmother. Because I have a word of wisdom for you. Glory be to God. Something the Holy Spirit has given me and I want to share it with you. I want to give you guys a little challenge. So let's talk about wisdom today. What is wisdom? We know that the Bible says the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But if you go into the world, the world has its own say about what wisdom is. Wisdom in the form of books, of uh, secular knowledge, uh, those uh, secular universities, wisdom is everywhere. Now, I recommend, I for sure recommend that you are renewing your minds daily with new and uh, wonderful, challenging things that are going to make you sweat, but also make you go, oh my goodness, I just challenged my mind today. I just challenged my brain. I just worked my brain out today. Glory be to God, because your mind is not there just to sit idle. Your mind can shrink, by the way. Your mind can shrink. So I think the best thing to do right now is to be expanding the mind. And you don't have to go to university for that. If I, I once heard this, that if you want to be if you want to be educated, you don't you do you do not go to a university. You buy books and you read them. But if you want a diploma, you go to a university. And this is not to knock those college, um, those college passionate, college minded people, because I went to college too. So what I'm saying is there are some people who don't have that luxury. But that does not mean that you cannot get knowledge on your own. And when you get knowledge, get understanding. Because the more knowledge you get, the more understanding you get. The wise man. The wise man. Glory be to God. So the world has its wisdom. God has his wisdom. And it seems to be that according to 1 Corinthians, the world's wisdom and God's wisdom clash. Clash. Call it the clash of the wisdom titans. So where are you attaining your wisdom? Where do you get your wisdom from? Chances are you spend a lot of time on social media. You're probably watching some informational videos on YouTube. Lots of people like watching their documentaries on Netflix, on Amazon Prime. Lots of people like to go on social media and learn something new every single day. You go on YouTube, you find some video to teach you something new. I think it's great. I think it's great to challenge yourself, to learn things that you never thought you, it was possible to learn. I give glory to God for social media because it's a tool. It's a powerful weapon. But of course, the enemy uses it for his own thing. And we as children of the kingdom, we as citizens of the kingdom, use it for God's glory. Do we not? Glory be to God. So if you go into the book of Proverbs, wisdom is crying out. She's like a woman. She's crying out. She's crying out for you out in the public places, in the chief places of concourse. She's not hiding. She wants you to pay attention to her. She wants you to notice her. Have you been paying attention to godly wisdom? Or have you been filling yourself up with worldly wisdom? Worldly wisdom puffs up. Worldly wisdom puffs up. It just, it simply does. Have you ever run into people who, because they are getting... They've gotten their education at some kind of university, some one of those really prestigious universities, the Ivy Leagues and stuff like that. Some people really, they, it goes to their head. It inflates their ego. And it can happen to anybody. This happens in religion too. People get too much biblical knowledge and it puffs them up. Knowledge puffs you up. But wisdom, that's a whole... When it's godly wisdom, when it's coming from directly from the Holy Spirit, see, you can't take any credit for that one. You can't glory in that one. All glory is for God. But man tends to get puffed up in his knowledge. They call them the know-it-alls. I think 
If you're honest with yourself, you've been there at least once. You've been there at least once. I was a big know-it-all in my day. When I was a kid, I was a big know-it-all. I thought I knew it all. But glory be to God. Because, see, the wisdom of God keeps you, keeps your feet on the ground. Keeps your feet on the ground. It keeps you in this constant realization that, I don't know anything, Lord. And I praise God that I don't need to know everything. There's such a freedom in that. Not having to know everything. You know, some people come up to you and they expect you to know everything and you feel bad because you don't know the answer to the question. Don't feel bad. We all, we're, we are all here to learn and nobody is born learned. We learn. We learn how to read. How many of you have taken that blessing for granted? Learning how to read. Just learning how to read. I had a book open in front of me the other day. I'm not a bookworm, by the way. I don't love books, and I confess that. But because I know there is so much rich knowledge, especially in books about the kingdom, is I'm opening them up, I'm reading them, and I'm telling God, Lord, thank you that I learned how to read, that somebody taught me how to read. That my mother sent me to school so I could learn how to read because recently I was speaking to my mother and she said she knows some people who don't know how to read. They're in their, they're in their 50s and their 60s and they don't know how to read. Thank God that you know how to read and start taking advantage of that tool, of that blessing. There's one thing to listen to audios. You can listen to the word of God on audio while you're driving, while you're working out, you can listen to a sermon. You know, there's so many different ways now in the digital age, but reading is still, there's just something so sacred and organic about reading, about pulling out that book and opening it up and reading. Like I said, I am not a total, total book lover, but I know what I like to read. <laughs> I know what I like to read. And I'll read it. I'll, I will devour it. I remember when I was like, I was in, I think I was in sixth grade, I was in history class and we had this, uh, we had this teacher, he liked to put us on the spot a lot and uh, it was, he put me on the spot that day. Um, he asked me to read out loud and after I was done, he said, what did you just read? And you know how it is because you're not interested in the material. You're really not interested. I mean, come on. Now I remember I read something about Squanto. But back in the day, I couldn't remember even the name. I was so nervous. He had put me on the spot. And I said, well, I realized, oh, my goodness. He, it's like I had a, a moment of realization there. He made me see in that kind of that humiliating way that I didn't understand what I was reading because I didn't care. Oh, but if you had put something like Judy Bloom in front of me, I would have told you what that whole thing was about. I like that book, Tiger Eyes. You see, it's not that you're dumb. It's not that you're, you're stupid because when you read something you're not interested in reading, your mind's just not engaging with it. Well, of course, to pass a history test, you've got to engage with it somehow but when you read what you're passionate about glory be to god that stuff sticks no one's forcing you to pass a test you read that stuff and you go wow let me reread that again how many times can i read this sometimes i wish i had photographic memory but then again that's not really a blessing because it's about engaging with the material and debating with it and dialoguing with it and making annotations on the pages of the book that right there is a blessing. It's no fun if you just memorize everything when you read it. Then you can't have fun with, you know, second-guessing yourself. Trial and error. That fun stuff. The whole light bulb thing with Thomas Edison. Thousand steps to create the light bulb. It took me a thousand steps to 
pass math. <laughs> Glory be to God. So reading, that is huge. But let's be a little more specific here. Reading the word of God. How many of you spend way too much time on social media? You're spending way too much time on social media every single day. And I know, I know how addicting it can be. You get up in the morning, the first thing you do is you reach over, you don't even drink your glass of water that you left there overnight and said, I'm going to drink it in the morning. No, instead you reach over, you grab your phone and you start looking, scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Before you even give thanks to God that he has restored your soul, that he has restored the breath, the air in your lungs, so you can live to see another day. Every day is a battle just to get up out of that bed, glory be to God. It takes willpower to get out of bed. It really does. It takes discipline. The people who get up at 5 a.m., you've ever heard of those people, those, the millionaires who get up really early at 5 a.m.? That takes discipline. People who get up even earlier than that, 3 a.m., 2.30 in the morning, to do their workouts, to spend time with God. I talked to my mother recently. She says, you know, I really have to set my alarm clock to wake me up earlier because I need to set aside time to talk to God. I need to set aside time to read his word. Otherwise, I feel I won't make it through the day. So I go, wow, that's exactly what it is. You have to do it. See, no one's going to force you, beloved. You've got to set the alarm. And if you're not a morning person, I heard Eric Thomas kind of give a little bit of criticism on that. <laughs> Eric Thomas, the preacher, he says, you're not a morning person. Okay, some people aren't morning people. They're just not. You're, some people are not going to understand what they're reading in the word of God if they wake up at five in the morning versus if they were to read the word of God at maybe six in the afternoon, maybe even nine in the evening. If they have that time, they can spare that time. I don't care how you get it done, family, as long as you're getting it done every single day. And let me tell you, you don't have to get religious with this thing. You don't have to enter into this whole ritual. All you need to do is give him your time. He's faithful to you. He gives you his time every single day. Our God, he's so faithful to you. He gives you his time. He gives you his wisdom. He's not holding it back from you. You're holding it back from yourself. You're holding yourself back from receiving all of the blessings. And I don't mean the world's always thinking material wealth when it comes to blessings. No, your riches are wisdom and knowledge and strength. God is rich in mercy, in grace, in knowledge, in wisdom. See, when you have wisdom, well, look at King Solomon. He didn't ask for riches. He asked for wisdom to rule Israel. Are you having a hard time managing people at work? If you're a manager, ask for wisdom. Ask for the wisdom of the Lord. Lord, give me wisdom to manage the people that I supervise, my employees. If you own a business, give me wisdom, Father. Give me wisdom. Lord Jesus, give me wisdom. He'll give it to you. He will give it to you. I guarantee you. See, wisdom isn't something esoteric. It's not... It's not something that's being kept for, from you to make you sweat. It's right there. It's like electricity. Someone already paid all the electricity in the house, but you're not using it. You're not using it. Instead, we opt to go the easy route. We, we opt to go on social media. We opt to turn on the TV. And you know... Our spirits are telling us, hey, you know, you really should be, you really should be going and uh, going into prayer. You should be going into worship. You really should open up the word of your father. See what he has to say to you today. You have not spent time with your father today. And some of us will heed the call. We'll heed the call of wisdom, of the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we'll go into our bedrooms. We'll go into our prayer closets. And we will pray and we will read the word and we will meditate. Meditating 
Very important, beloved, to meditate on the Word of God. That's digesting the Word of God. That's breaking it down. It's like when we're eating. You ever heard somebody tell you, chew slower? Most people don't take their time to chew their food. They eat really, really quick, especially when you're trying to beat those 30 minutes of your lunch break at work. You eat so quickly, you could enter a marathon, one of those competitions. Are you doing the same thing with the Word of God? You know what I recommend? Take three verses and call me in the morning. Glory be to God. Just take three verses. Just three. Take them. Savor them. Digest them. And meditate. You don't need to know the entire Bible. You don't need to spend one hour reading the Bible. God understands time constraints and time limits. But we won't use that as a crutch, will we? Right now, we are simply not distributing our time appropriately. That's all. We are not managing ourselves. Forget about time management. Learning how to manage ourselves is more important, beloved. Because when you learn how to manage yourself, time management, that's a byproduct. Suddenly... Something has become so important to you. Your time with God, like my mother said. My mom said, I, she tells people no. People who want to come at her early in the morning, she says, no, I need this time. This is my time. I need this time to spend with God, to read his word, to pray. And she's faithful. Let me tell you, she is faithful at it. Glory be to God. And that just inspires me. She sets her clock, her alarm. She's got a million things to do in one day, and she still sets her alarm. That ministers to me. It coaches me. So I say, okay, well, how can I take that and apply it in my personal life? Some people wake up super early and they hit the gym. But you know, the same, some of those same people who are hitting the gym aren't hitting the spiritual gym. They're not working out the muscles of a man, of the spirit man. It takes a lot of spiritual energy to get up out of bed. If you're all depressed, discouraged, when you wake up in the morning and all you want to do is pull the covers over your head, your spirit man is weak. You're spiritually anemic. That's why it's so important to feed your spirit man first. And like I said, secular knowledge, there's nothing wrong with reading secular books. Just be careful about what you're putting in your mind because it enters into your spirit. But it's good to challenge yourself. Read the hard stuff. But just know that this is not what gives your spirit strength. What gives your spirit strength is... The humble word of God. You ever felt so when you, went, when you were in college, when you were in high school, reading all of those, those textbooks, it was just so overwhelming on your mind and your brain. You needed to catch that. You did 45 minutes of reading and then you gave yourself a few minutes of a break because you needed to catch a break. It was just so much. That doesn't happen with the word of God. Notice how the Bible is written. It's written in such an elementary language. In an elementary format. There's no big words. Okay, the King James for some people can be a bit challenging, but I say challenge yourself. For those who are speaking Spanish, the Reina Valera. Challenge yourself. It's poetic. And if you have a hard time with it, Keep pushing. You're only building resistance. It's like when you're lifting weights. If you're having a hard time, even if you're not reading the King James Version, if you're reading the New International Version, whatever version you decide on, as long as you are opening up the word of your father, reading the Constitution of the Kingdom of Heaven, because this is where your rights, this is where your rights are at. You got to know your rights. You know how it is when you, you know, if you live in the United States, they tell you, you know your rights. 
know the amendments, know the Constitution. Well, the same thing, same thing goes with the Word of God. Because you see, you have enemies in high spiritual places, principalities of darkness. They want to strip you of your rights. I had a dream about like a year ago where I felt that, I perceived that's exactly what is, what's happening in the spirit. They're trying to strip you of your, your, your kingdom rights. Forget about your, 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 your civil rights here in the United States if you live here or wherever you are at in the world listening to me. You have rights as a human being, but you also have rights as a child of God. And the enemy wants to take, he wants to blind you to your rights, keep you in the dark about your rights, keep you on the plantation so you don't know your rights, so you don't fight for them. And in that dream, I remember I, it was, it was exactly that. I was fighting for my rights, but they were, you know how it isn't so funny in dreams when you're, when you, when you're dreaming, it, it changes on you. And, but I perceived it in my spirit. That's exactly what was going on, fighting for my rights. Because someone was trying to take them away from me. People are worried about losing their rights right now in the natural world. I say you should be worried about losing your rights in the kingdom. It's all in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. Your rights are there, written in black and white in the Holy Bible. But see, when you're spending more time getting the knowledge of the world, the wisdom of the world, and you're trying to learn more about the world than you are learning about your father, your creator, the one who manufactured you, you're going to get a lot of things wrong. You're going to be walking around, lost in a maze, dead end to dead end, not able to find your way out. It's right there in front of you. The constitution of the kingdom of God, of the kingdom of heaven. See, you don't have to wait until Jesus returns to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have the keys. He gave them to you. But see, you got to open up the book. And you got to open up your spirit. And you got to be receptive to the words of the Holy Spirit. See, he's crying out for you, just like the voice of wisdom. He wants you. He only wants you. See, there's no one else like you on earth, beloved. If they were to clone you a million times, they still couldn't get it right. They still couldn't get it right. You're so unique. And when you leave this world, like I said, you're going to leave, you're going to leave, you're, you're going to leave a vacuum. Because you are a beloved child of God. No matter who you are, no matter where you are listening to me from, God loves you, and he wants you, and he wants you on the front lines. He wants your faith. He gave you, it's, it's, I mean, go into any hotel room. Most any hotel room has a holy Bible. Who's reading it? Who's taking advantage of the power? Are you ready to unleash beast mode? Get into the word of God. Start declaring, start decreeing your faith in Almighty God. The power is in your hands. Learn how to harness it. So you're going to have to sacrifice a few things. Yeah, we all do. We all have to sacrifice. To spend more time with God, even Jesus sacrificed hours of sleep. He had to sacrifice too. When he had to give the word, the gospel to the people, he sacrificed a lot. He poured himself out. That's kingdom. Your servant, your call to serve. But when you're in the kingdom, it doesn't even feel like that. It doesn't feel like you're serving. You know how, in, how it is in the world when you serve and they make you feel so humiliated? They make you feel like you owe them? Not so in the kingdom of heaven. Serving in the kingdom of heaven, serving in the house of the Lord, doesn't even feel like serving. It feels, it's exhilarating. It's empowering. Because glory be to God, you know somehow, somehow God somewhere is going to use this word and he's going to use it to help someone else. And that's all we can hope and ask for. 
that our words are falling on fertile soil. You do it at home. You do it at your workplace. You do it at school. You do it online. Drop those seeds. Drop those seeds. Drop those seeds. Drop as many as you need to. Remember, those birds come in and they start stealing the seeds. Some of those seeds are going to fall on, on the rock. They're not going to take root. But you keep dropping them anyway. You keep serving your gift. You keep working in your purpose. And if you haven't discovered your purpose, no problem. Ask God to reveal the purpose. If you don't know what your gifts are yet, I guarantee you, you have gifts. You have not been left behind in gifts. Glory be to God. I assure you that. I assure you that you have not been left behind in gifts. Everybody who has entered into this world, into this life, has been given gifts to deploy. Every single body. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. And seven, verse five through seven, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that ye come behind in no gift. There's no excuse, beloved. For those people who think that gifts are just for a certain elite, not so, says the Lord. The Lord is a gift giver. He gives the best gifts too. And if you go into the Bible, the best gifts come from the bottom. The best gifts come from the bottom. You see all the men in the Bible that God empowered, that God made to be, he tree trained leaders. He made a leader out of Moses, out of Aaron. Out of David, the shepherd, best gifts come from the bottom. Jesus of Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Best gifts come from the bottom. Glory be to God. And you know, I think it's sad how cheated we are in religion about our power as children of God. Religion tells you, religion teaches you Jesus teaches you Jesus, but doesn't tell you that you are Jesus. Oh, you are Jesus. Because once you share in his, in his inheritance, once you accept, you believe on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, once you have been sealed with the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of promise, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of truth, you become a child of God. Just like Jesus Christ. See, he came to set the example to follow it. You are Jesus. There's no excuse. See, the way religion teaches Jesus Christ, it tells you that here's this man, but you can't be like him. And what did Jesus do with Peter? When Peter saw Jesus walking on water, if Jesus had been one of these religious folk, he would have said, no, 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 Peter, get back in your place. This, this, you can't walk on water like I can. This is my thing. This is my turf, Peter. What did he say to Peter? He invited him out to walk with him on the water. Walk with me on water. Walk with me, he says in Revelation, in white. Walk with me, beloved. Walk with Jesus, like Jesus. I don't care where you find yourself right now listening to me. If you find my my brothers and sisters listening from India, shout out to my brothers and sisters in India. Shout out to those of the ones who are listening in Africa, in Mexico, in South America, in the United States. Glory be to God. Walk with your king. You are Jesus. 
Those religious people don't like to hear that. I am? Yes, you are, beloved. Did you not know? See, you're supposed to aspire to become him because you are him. You are Jesus. But if you're looking at Jesus and saying, that's a standard I can never reach, then you're just going to end up believing that and you're going to end up believing your life powerless. Powerless. Powerless, completely powerless. When he says, I have overcome the world, it's because you can too, beloved. Yeah, you're going to have tribulations in this life. That's a guarantee. But glory be to God for the tribulation. It keeps us humble. And it, and it refines us. And it shows us who our God is, who our mighty God is. That though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil for the Lord is with us. But see, religion is telling you Jesus is the standard and you just simply can't measure up to that standard. You have to get... You have to get all, they make you feel like you can never do enough. Not so. Not so. You have God-given power and authority. But here is the key. Are you seeking wisdom, attaining knowledge, and getting understanding? Because the enemy, he's so slick about this. He throws a distraction, a monkey wrench at you every single day. Oh, the house needs cleaning. Oh, the yard needs cleaning. Oh, the kids need taking to the doctor, to the dentist. Yeah, don't neglect that stuff. Absolutely not. The dogs need to be taken to the vet. Oh, this and that. But then after you're done with all your chores, he still tells you, oh, you got your favorite TV shows. Oh, there's social media. Oh, there's, he sends somebody to visit you late at night in your house. He's got a lot of monkey wrenches, a lot of ways out. Because he doesn't want, he wants to keep you blind to the power that is within you. See, it's already in you. It's not outside of you. It's in you. And the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. So I want to give you a little homework for this weekend. Think of one thing, just one thing you can sacrifice, give up for the Lord. Just this weekend, start small. Great things come out of the, the small things. Do not underestimate small beginnings, beloved. Don't try and go all big and eat the entire chunk of cake. You'll get sick. You'll get tired. You'll get burnt out. God doesn't want you burned out. He needs you on the front line. But he's got to train you. So if you've been wanting to fast, go to him in prayer. Ask him, Father, what is the fast that you have for me? Don't try and do this without him. If you're trying to fast social media, good. Start small. Don't try and get all religious and start going all over, getting out of line. Start very small. Small, very small. God is in the details. Just remember, you're not defeated. So, I'm going to join you. I'm going to join you. I'm also going to let go of one thing this weekend so I can spend even more time with my father. I fear that lately the enemy has been attacking so hard. He's been bombarding us. He's been oppressing us. Oh, it's been so bad for so many people just this month. And I felt it. I have felt it in my own life. And, you know, glory be to God. I give glory because it, it shows me this is where you got to keep lifting more weights. See, you can't just fall back and say, oh, the sky is falling. You got to say, all right, what do I have to do to fix this thing? I like fixing things. It's in my nature. What do I got to do to fix this? How can I make this work? You know, growing up, my, we, were, we had this Camaro, this Trans Am, and uh, um, I'm sure it was this really noisy car, and 
And my mom didn't have any, anything else except that car. That car was faithful. Thank you, God. That car was faithful. And took us everywhere. Took us everywhere. Never crashed. Glory be to God. And never failed us. And so, you know, there comes a time where cars get, start getting so old that you have to grab, like, pliers and <laughs> use them to <laughs> lower the, the, the window. The, the, the window. So that's what we did. You know, it's like Mexican style. That's what we did. We took some pliers. We were like, all right, roll down the window. The handle broke off. Get the pliers. Grab the pinzas. You improvise. How can I fix this? So don't think you have to have it all figured out. Even with your relationship with God, he wants you. He doesn't want your rituals. He doesn't want your religion. He doesn't want you praying in tongues. He doesn't want you getting on your knees and scraping them and then just, you know, doing all of these crazy religious rituals. He wants you. He wants you. That's all he wants. Come as you are. Come as you are. Come as you are. Don't think prayer has to be this fancy, fancy, schmancy thing. It doesn't. Come to him as you are. Give glory to the Father. Praise him for what he's doing in your life, for what he's about to do in your life. Praise him for this word. Praise your Father. Just lift up your hands and praise and worship him and bless his holy name. Bless the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the blood of Jesus. Yeah, bless the blood of Jesus Christ. For in it you have redemption, forgiveness of sins, salvation. Glory be to God. It's not that difficult, beloved. Religion tells you you got to do all these steps. You got to take all these steps and still it's not enough. Still you're doing something wrong. Spirit and truth. Obey. Obedience. Submit to your king. Just come to him as you are. Don't be like Adam and Eve. See, they were hiding. As soon as they ate from that tree, they were hiding. See, this wasn't the fact that they were naked that was, they were shameful. They were ashamed of being naked. That was their spiritual condition. Have you been hiding from God? Have you not been going to your father in prayer because you're hiding something? Confess your sins. Confess your offenses. He's ready to forgive. He's ready to love on you and give you the wisdom and empower you and strengthen you and lift you up with resurrection power. Don't let the enemy steal your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength, beloved. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Can I get an hallelujah? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Glory be to God. The joy of the Lord Jesus Christ, make no mistake, glory be to God, is your strength. That's where it's at. It's not in your material wealth, in your possessions, in your money. Nothing. It's the joy of the Lord. Start dancing like David. If you can get up and just start dancing like David, start dancing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. That's where it's at. So this weekend, sacrifice one little thing you can because God is faithful to you. What are you going to show him this weekend? This weekend, show your faithfulness to God. Show your faithfulness to your Father in heaven, your Father of lights, your faithfulness to your King. You can do it. I can do it. You know why? Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That's where it's at. It's not by your own might. It's by Jesus, by his Holy Spirit. So right now, a small little prayer you can say is, Dear Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, keep my mind firmly set where you want it to be focused on today. Glory be to God. And he is faithful and he will do it. Father God, order the steps of every single person who is listening, who is tuning in, who will listen. Order their steps, Lord. Help them see it's not religion, it's a relationship. It is a daily communication, a daily dialogue. A daily dialogue, a daily interaction, a daily engagement. You can be washing the dishes and praising your, your, your father. You can be cleaning your bedroom and praising your father. You can be cleaning out your yard. You can be 
doing anything and praising your father, worship him. It's very easy. Bless the name of the Lord, just as Job did in his tribulation. Blessed be the name of the Lord God, Yahweh. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. Blessed be the Holy Spirit. Blessed be Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't forget to bless that precious blood. That's why you have salvation. That's why you have redemption. Don't let the enemy use you as a punching bag, beloved. Get into the word of your father. Take three verses. That's all you got to do. Start with three. Worship him. Give him all your worries and cares and then worship him and thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Give him more thanks. Thank you, Father. I love you also very much, family. I'm Grace, your spiritual godmother, and I pray this word falls where it needs to. Glory be to God. You are all loved. You are all children of God. And for those of you who have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is time. If you are under sound of my voice, you can still enter into the kingdom of heaven. There is time to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Today is your day. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat after me, dear Lord Jesus. I thank you for saving me, Lord Jesus. I thank you for redeeming me of my sins, Lord Jesus. I believe, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are the Son of God, that you are not just a man, but that you are the Son of God, that you are not just a prophet, but that you are the Son of the Almighty Living Jehovah Yahweh God. Hallelujah. I receive you, Lord Jesus. I accept you. I receive you. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my home. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my spirit. Enter now into me, Lord Jesus Christ. Enter into my spirit. Take control. Take dominion of my life. You are my king. And I will bow to you, Lord, forevermore. Let me receive your Holy Spirit. Empower me, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Or where would I be? Where would I be without that man, Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise God. Receive the Lord Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit. Ooh, glory. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Beloved, if you've prayed that prayer, Offer your sacrifices of righteousness to the Lord. Your forgiveness of your enemies. Ask for forgiveness of your sins. But forgive. Do not forget to offer the sacrifice of forgiveness of your enemies. Be like your father. Be perfect. You can be perfect in an imperfect world. Love your enemies. Bless those who hate you, who persecute you. Who speak all manner of evil things falsely for the sake of Jesus. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, beloved. I love you all so very much. Stay tuned for a new episode. In the meantime, take some time. Commune. Commune with your hearts upon your bed and give glory to God. Jesus is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Shalom. Allah.